third category, and that is drinks. And so, um, so in drinks, we are looking at three things generally. Right, the first one is intoxicants. Uh, so the word used actually in the in the prophet's hadith, in which he said, "Every intoxicant is khamar, and every khamar is haram." So they use khamar, which means uh, every kind of intoxicant comes under the thing of khamar, which means not only alcoholic drinks, but also um, drugs as well. Omar al-Khattab says, khamar is that which befogs the mind, which causes you to lose your normal mind and you don't function in a regular sane way. There's something has it befogs your mind. You're, so you, you're not functioning in a regular way. So when it comes to intoxicants, there are some following rules. Number one, uh, small amount of it is also disallowed. You know, people say, well, yeah, but if it intoxicates, but if I drink a little bit, if I take two beer, I am become intoxicated. The Prophet ﷺ said, of that which intoxicates in a large amount, a small amount is haram. And he also said, if a bucket full intoxicates, a sip of it is haram. So it is more than the intoxication issue that is preventing us from doing, right? Because it's created a habit. So anything that has intoxication in large numbers taking it in small amount is haram secondly trading in alcohol the, the prophet sallallahu cursed 10 groups of people when it comes to this and he says truly allah has cursed khamar and has cursed the one who produces it the one for whom it is being produced the one who drinks it and the one who serves it, and the one who carries it, and the one for whom it is carried, the one who sells it, and the one who earns from the sale of it, the one who buys it, and the one for whom it is bought. So this is a long hadith giving 10 categories of people. That, so basically with anything to do with alcohol is more or less like you're in trouble. You can't trade it, you can't buy it, you can't sell it, you can't do nothing of that. Or how about sometimes we get a gift and, and the prophet, a man came with a cast of wine to the prophet as a gift and the prophet told him Allah has prohibited this. And the man said, shall I sell it? The prophet says, Allah has also prohibited selling it. So the man said, shall I give it to a Jew as a gift? He said, he has also prohibited you from giving it to a Jew as a gift. So the man said, well, what are we going to do with it? The prophet said, pour it on the ground. So we're not allowed to accept alcohol as gift. Alcohol at parties and gatherings, the prophet وسلم, said, whoever believes on Allah on the last day must not sit on the table at which khamar is consumed. So you have to be very careful when you're going to parties that have alcohol and khamar. It's a very serious matter in our religion. But yeah, uh, that whoever believes in Allah on the last day must not sit at the table at which khamar is consumed. So we don't say, well, not because I am not drinking it, but don't be in the company. Because there's an ayah which mentioned when the punishment of Allah comes and people who are sinful, Allah will not only selectively from the crowd pick the ones who are doing wrong, the ones who are doing good will get wrapped up in that as well. Because you are not supposed to be in that kind of a crowd. Alcohol and medicine. When a man, when when told that a man used wine as medicine, the prophet said it is not a medicine but a disease. So we are only allowed to have alcohol and medicine, as you mentioned before, where the three conditions: there is no halal substitute, uh, your life is in danger, and it's rec and a Muslim doctor writes off on it. So the same thing happens with alcohol and medicine that we have to be very careful about. And so that is khamar, or in, in one aspect of khamar, intoxicants. The other one is uh, drugs. Khamar is what befogs the mind. So all form of drugs that 
causes you to lose your mind, marijuana, cocaine, opium, etc. We are not part of that. The third area in terms of drinks is harmful substances, smoking. Uh, it is it is a uh, haram considered haram smoking actually was not in the time of the prophet so and then it developed over the years and then it used to be classified initially by some of the scholars as makru something disliked but not haram but after all the current research have shown how it destroys your lungs and so many um, health benefits of it they have now classified it as a haram substance that the haram activity we don't smoke and so it's now um, a lot of the modern day scholars said it is haram um, in, in terms of harmful food, any form of harmful food, as we mentioned, we started by mentioning Allah tell you to eat of the good things of the earth. And so anything that is harmful to be consumed, and this includes, for example, urine, drinking urine, um, taking poisons, any one of those kind of harmful substances that we have, any kind of chemical that you may put in the food that is harmful for human consumption, all of those things are considered harmful food and we should not partake of them. Things that are going to create and, and affect you from being a healthy person. Um, because the Prophet Sallallahu have a saying, he said, do not harm yourself or others. And Allah mentioned in the Quran, do not kill yourselves. Indeed, Allah is ever merciful to you. And he mentioned he makes lawful for them what is good and he makes unlawful what is foul. And so uh, we get guided by that. And our scholars have put together many, many lists of things. Uh, there's a beautiful book by Brother Zahir uh, a good friend of mine who was in New York. And um, he started a project which I found very, very beautiful because he said it's so hard for Muslims to know what is haram and halal in food and so on. So what he did, he compiled a list, it's called a handbook of halal and haram products. So in this book would have like, if you need to buy cereal, he would list all the halal cereal, all the halal cheese, all the halal this and that and chewing gum or whatever it is. So rather than telling you what is haram, he gives you a list of things which you could buy that makes it easy. So when you go to the grocery store, you know this particular brand is halal. Because he lists all the brands that is halal. So you can take the book and you could prepare your shopping list up front. So when you go to the grocery store, you know exactly what you're picking up off the shelf. You don't have to sit and read ingredients in the back. He have done all that research for you. And so you just pick the products that you would like from the different, different brands. And he have the whole list of brands. And he updates them. He's been updating them every year. I don't know what's the latest on it. But he has, it's called a, a handbook of halal and haram. The other brother who has wrote, uh, written a lot about foods is Ahmed Sakh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy in his soul and, and reward him tremendously. Ahmed Sakh has written many, many books. He's one of the supreme champions of Muslims in this country. And if you'd have never heard of Ahmed Sakh, then please repeat the name and make dua for him. So he's written many, many books including khutbah books, but he was a nutritionist by profession. And so he has written Understanding Halal Foods, Fallacies and Facts, Pork, Reasons for Its Prohibition, A Muslim Guide to Food Ingredients, in which he went through all the, the strange names that you see in the back of packages. He took each one of those, where do you see this glycerine and this, that, and that, and that, and he explains what is the chemical content of them and what is it and if it's halal and if it's haram for us. You have another book called The Handbook of Muslim Foods. And so there are resources that exist you know, from our scholars in the community if you want to get very detailed and involved. We have a one hour class, so I hope inshallah that tonight we benefit you. I know we have like about four or five minutes more when I open it for questions. <laughs>